Hello, friend. Welcome to join this rebranded uh, weekly live series from Lawyers Design School. This is an episode number 20 in our weekly, weekly lives. And now, from now on, it's called uh, Legal Design Thinking in Real Life, IRL. And the purpose of these sessions is to contribute uh, to the transformation of legal profession by giving real life examples uh, on using, using human-centered design in legal space. So what it really looks like and what are the lessons learned and what does success look like and all that, all that great stuff. And what this rebranding also means that we will be inviting guests to these uh, sessions from now on every now and then. And uh, so you won't be getting just, just my face and, and voice talking which is really, really cool and exciting because sharing and, and collaborating is, is in our DNA and we want to make that part of our message uh, as well in a bigger way than, than before. And this, uh, this weekly, uh, these weekly lives and all of this rebranding is all for you so that you can start imagining what legal design thinking can mean for you in your work, uh, in your business and your community. Uh, so you will get uh, examples and inspiration uh, to get more happy clients and make yourself a happy lawyer too with the help of legal design thinking. So welcome. Today we'll start uh, this legal design thinking in real life uh, series with an example very close by, meaning our own business at Lawyers Design School. And if you are right now in the place of starting your business uh, in law or you want to create a legal service or some new, new concept, you may be curious uh, to hear this story of ours. For one, uh, the business that we now, now have, the, the business that we today have, is actually completely different that, that, than what I set out to do in the beginning. And the design thinking process made me pivot uh, the entire in the idea and, uh, and start from scratch when I had already done tons of work uh, to get uh, my first idea, which was consultancy going. And I know that it sounds, it may sound, sound uh, daunting, but uh, it's really not because this, this pivoting helped me save so much time and money for not going too far with this original idea uh, that just uh, just because I thought that it was a great idea and worth worth of pursuing. So how it all was in the beginning. At first, I had just an idea and a concept for a consultancy business in legal design thinking. My idea and, and thinking was that I would work with with law firms and in-house teams on a project basis to help them with their, with, with their challenges and uh, development projects using, using legal design thinking. And the plan was that, that I, would be, uh, I would have been the kind of external consult, consultant in these projects. And while, while uh, this business didn't turn out to be this consultancy, uh, at the end, the seed of co-design workshops that we currently many times have uh, the seed for those was already uh, planted in the beginning because I have never been a fan of consultant, uh, consultants who claim to have the answers uh, looking outside in. But I have preferred getting everyone involved and all of us getting our hands dirty and truly co-creating um, on the thing that we are working on. So that was the, that was the original idea where I started. But before jumping uh, into the business development, I think it's important to talk about the why before, behind your business or service. Uh, get clear on the bigger purpose of your, of your venture. And why is this important? Understanding and defining your why, why sets you up for the, for the rocky road of, of starting something new. And your why gives you direction and guidance uh, when you need to make big, uh, big and sometimes quite hard uh, decisions for your business. It's where you go to uh, when things don't work out the way you, you planned. And it's the one thing that gives you motivation uh, to continue 
when it's when it, when it's really hard. And my my why for starting starting a new legal design business was to ensure access to justice for everyone. Maybe you have heard me talk talk about this before. The why this is the why that's been uh, kind of driving me since high school when when I decided to apply for law school. It's a matter of social justice and and human rights that we all, regardless of our background and wealth, have access to justice and equity. And that was the foundation uh, I started to to build the new business as well. And if you look close enough uh, to the current current uh, business we have in Lawyers Design School, uh, this this why this kind of commitment to promoting access to justice can be seen in many ways in in our business and operations. And one one concrete example is our social impact design lab uh, that runs pro bono projects. Okay, but there, there I was uh, all set for starting new, new design, starting to design the new business. And where did I start? I started with my potential clients uh, with the purpose of discovering their needs and hopes uh, for a legal design service. And in design thinking process, this phase is called the discovery phase. And, and, and at, at first I created a plan to have deep dive interviews with these potential clients, ideal clients really. So those people who represent uh, the clients that I would love to work with. And when I, when, when I had the plan made out, then I reached out to these people asking for an hour uh, of their time. And I think this is the scary part, reaching out to people asking for their help and approaching them with open-ended questions without any certainty as to where the discussion is going to take. All you have is, is your curiosity, your ability to listen and a loose plan uh, on what you might be talking about in these interviews. So I did a two set of, uh, two set of interviews for different age groups. And on top of these interviews, I did a lot of other discovery work as well. We read reports on legal market and legal profession and future, future scenarios about where our industry is, is headed. And I also benchmarked the legal design space, learned about the other businesses in the same industry and, and what I could learn from them. So basically, it was all about gathering a lot of data wherever I could find it. And here's a question for you. What could this discovery work look like for you uh, today? What clients could you approach for interview? And what data could you gather uh, and from which sources? Something to think about. Well, after this, uh, this initial phase, I then moved on to the next phase of this design process. I moved on to analyze the data and, and crystallize the insight uh, that the data has to offer. And my favorite tool for this, this uh, phase is mind mapping. And it's so, so funny that, that uh, how you time and time again think you know what's going to come out of this process. You have gathered the data, so you think that you have all the information already in your head. But actually the magic happens when you start processing the data with the tools like, like uh, mind mapping. It always produces some new understanding, new insight, and some connections that you didn't see before. Just there, they are just uh, there waiting for you to find them. So at the end of this anal anal analysis, uh, I had one insight actually kind of screaming at me, one that I had not understood uh, in the middle of, of the discovery work. And the insight was that lawyers do not want to outsource legal design thinking to a consultant. They want to learn legal design thinking themselves. Uh, as one interviewee put it, you cannot outsource thinking. So talking about a pivotal moment in, in this process, this was definitely one. So uh, after getting this, this insight, uh, transformative one, 
uh, I was faced with a question of whether I would still continue with my consultancy path or try to come up with a new idea that would better meet uh, these needs that I had just learned about. And the answer for me was, of course, pretty clear. I had to scrap the old, old idea and come up with a better one. And it took a few brainstorming sessions uh, to get the idea uh, for Lawyers Design School. Uh, but there, there it was. Then, then, then this uh, concept of Lawyers Design School was born. Very, very rough idea at first, really to get the basic concept together. Barely, if, just barely enough that I could um, put the idea to test. Because that's, that's what, what we need to do with, with our great ideas. We need to test them in order to validate them. And what's the best way to test your idea? It's, it's uh, to get it in front of your clients and get their feedback on it. And if you're working on a business or something to sell, like a service, you don't want to get just any feedback like, OK, it's nice, but you want to know if, if your clients will buy it, if they will use their money uh, and buy it. That's the best way to validate the idea with buying customers. And the, and the method for this is that you sell your idea first and then you build it then you go on and, and build it not the other way around that you just you spend uh, months and months of building your building your product or service and then start selling it but you sell it first so in my case um, i built a very simple sales page for lawyers design school with the basic information on the school and and some sales sales pitch and it was a static uh, page with not even one external link to anywhere because I didn't have a website at that point. All I had was a rough outline of the school. And what's most important thing is the value proposition, what the clients would get out of my school. And then I, and then I went and, and posted the, the sales page to social media, to my feed. And I also bought paid ads on LinkedIn with uh, 50 euros. And then I waited. In the end, I uh, sold four seats uh, to the first school. And that was my validation at that point. It was good enough number to get the first course content ready and workshops organized and then continue testing, testing with the school and the content and all, the, all, the, all that goes, goes along with, with running a school. And you may think that, uh, that, that for participants, it's, it's an awful low number to put in all the work to create the product. But I say that you have to start somewhere. And in design thinking process, you don't actually focus that much on quantity, uh, but you focus on quality. What you need to learn and what is the best way to learn that information that you need. So going all, all in with your people to co-create co your thing is the work. And you can get so much done even with a small group of, of uh, people. So that was what it looked like for me in the beginning of Lawyers Design School. I started with a completely empty table. And then it was followed by a lot of scary next steps, very small ones. And as you see, it's all doable and so, so valuable work. The work that is necessary to give you the insight and, and, and the information that you crave uh, for your business and services to be successful. No guessing, but doing the work. So there you have it. One case study on building a business with uh, design thinking. So now it's your turn. What, what did you learn today? And be sure to follow next episodes where we'll be sharing more insight on legal design thinking in real life. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you want to reach me and if you have any comments or questions, just uh, send me a DM and I will get back to you. Bye for now.